I've tested more than 75 smartwatches over the last two years, some of which cost as little as $20, whereas others set me back $1,000. In this video, we're going to use objective measurements to see which of these watches perform best at different price points to help you decide which watch is best for you. I'll particularly focus on the sports and health tracking features of each of these watches. So let's take a look at those results. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in this video, I'll show you which smartwatches and health trackers perform best in my testing, also taking into account the prices of the different watches. So whether you're looking for an expensive premium smartwatch or you have a small budget, this video will help you make your decision. Now I'll spend most of the video looking at the heart rate accuracy and the sleep tracking performance, but I'll also discuss some other features like GPS tracking, step counting and general health tracking. But let's start by looking at the heart rate tracking accuracy, since this is important to most people. However, let me first explain the four price categories which I divided the watches in. Now this histogram shows an overview of the number of watches I tested for each price point, with the cheaper watches on the left and the more expensive ones on the right. As I said, I divided the watches into four categories, divided here by the red dotted lines. The cheapest category are watches that are currently under $50. The second category is watches between $50 and $100. The third category between $100 and $200. And the last category consists of watches that are more than $200. Now I know that this last price point is pretty broad, but this way we have a roughly similar number of watches in each category. Okay, now that we know what categories we will use, let's take a look at the heart rate tracking accuracy. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of all watches against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. And we'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors or spinning. And those results are displayed right here. Now, by the way, don't worry, I'll display a more easy to read graphic in a moment, but I wanted to provide a more general overview first. Now, the agreement of each of the watches with the chest strap is displayed along the horizontal axis, and we want that value to be as close to one as possible. On the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. This means that the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its agreement with the reference device. Now the four colors indicate the different price categories, so I marked the cheapest watches in green and the most expensive watches in red. Now before looking at each price category separately, let's first zoom into the best performing watches. And here I display all watches with a correlation score of 0.9 or higher. And as you can see, the more expensive watches do tend to perform better. Basically all of the best performing watches are either in the $100 to $200 category or the $200 or higher category. However, there are some relatively cheap watches that perform rather well, like for instance the Huawei Watch Fit, which I could find on Amazon for $90, or the even cheaper Honor Band 6 and Huawei Band 6, which you can get for about $50. However, the results are much easier to interpret if we look at each price category separately. And let's start with the cheapest watches, which are under $50. We can see that there are nine watches in this category. And again, the more to the top right, the better a device. As you can see, the Honor Band 6 and the Huawei Band 6 are the best performing watches in this category. Though I should say that the Mi Band 6 and the Fitbit Inspire 2 are also doing pretty okay. And in my opinion, all of the remaining watches are doing quite a bit worse. And I would not recommend any of these for heart rate tracking while cycling indoors. But let's now look at slightly more expensive watches, those between $50 and $100. In this category, we can see that the Huawei Watch Fit 1 performs best, and this watch is still relatively cheap, as I mentioned before. Even cheaper are the Polar Verity Sense and the Polar OH1 Plus, which are also doing quite well. Now, these are two generations of basically the same device. Now, these Polar devices are actually heart rate straps that you can wear on your biceps, for instance, and they're not actually smartwatches. But if you're just interested in heart rate tracking, these are pretty good and not that expensive. And we can also see that at this price point, the Fitbit Charge 5 and the Huawei Band 7 are quite good. And as you can also see in this plot, I would not recommend any of the Amazfit devices for heart rate tracking, since these tend to do pretty badly, and you can see them here on the bottom left. 
Next, let's take a look at slightly more expensive watches, those between $100 and $200. Now, the best performing watch here is the previous generation of the Apple Watch SE, which I could find for under $200. As you will see later in this video, Apple Watches tend to do very well, both when it comes to heart rate tracking and sleep state tracking. So the Apple Watch SE is definitely a watch I would recommend. Now, as you can see, Huawei watches are also pretty good heart rate trackers and the Huawei Watch ET Runner and Huawei Watch Fit 2 are amongst the top performing watches under $200. Now, the old Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 also did pretty well on me, but it did take a few firmware updates for Samsung to get that right, since on the old firmware it didn't do so well. Now, I would generally say that all watches in this list with a correlation of 0.95 or higher did pretty well, so anything from the Fitbit Lux and higher. Let's close things off with the most expensive watches, which are displayed right here. As you can see, Apple Watches and Huawei Watches again perform the best out of all devices so far. The Apple Watch Series 6, 7 and 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra and 2022 SE all appear to do about equally well and all are really the top performers. Some of the Huawei watches also do really well, especially the GT3 Pro. Again, Galaxy watches do pretty well for this exercise and the Google Pixel watch is also not bad at all. Finally, the Whoop straps are also doing quite well, so these are pretty okay choices. And just for your reference, this is a zoomed in view of all watches with a correlation of 0.8 or higher at this price point. And as I said before, I would take roughly 0.95 as the cutoff for decent watches. So for spinning, we indeed see that the more expensive watches do tend to perform a bit better, but also in the cheaper price categories, there are pretty good watches out there. So if you want to save some money, the Huawei Watch Fit 1 is a pretty solid choice. And also the older generation Apple Watch SE is still very good. Now, if you want to spend a bit more money, a newer Apple Watch is a really good choice, though the battery life of Apple Watches is pretty limited and you need to charge them every day. Now, the Whoop Strap is a pretty decent heart rate tracker, but given the monthly fee you need to pay, it does get quite expensive over time. Next, let's take a look at a more challenging type of exercise, cycling outside. While cycling outdoors, watches tend to shift a lot more on the wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult. Here is that overview. Now I should note that I did not test every watch for all types of exercise, so there are a few fewer watches in this overview. Now you can again see that there's a general trend that the cheaper watches, which are marked in blue and green, do tend to perform worse than the more expensive watches marked in yellow and red, as the cheaper ones do tend to be more towards the bottom left. Now in general, I would not recommend any of the watches below $50 if you want to track your heart rate while cycling, as the best watch in this category is the Mi Band 6, which has a correlation of just 0.67. But we can see that much more clearly if we zoom into the best performing watches. As you can see, the Mi Band 6 is not doing that great compared to many other watches. The Huawei Band 6 is doing quite well though, and this watch was only $65 when I last checked, so that's quite a good deal. As you can see, some Garmin watches, the Instinct 2 for instance and the Forerunner 255 are also doing quite okay, and the same goes for the Galaxy Watch 4 and 5, which are not doing too bad. The Whoop Strap is again also in the upper middle class of fitness trackers as well, though it's not amongst the absolute top performers. Now the best performing watches are still different Apple watches and some Huawei watches, like the Huawei Watch Fit 2, GT Runner and GT3 Pro. Overall, we indeed see that watches struggle much more with tracking my heart rate accurately while cycling outside compared to what we saw for cycling indoors. Still, there are several watches that perform decently in different price ranges, but the only watches that performed really well were Apple watches and some Huawei watches. But let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. As I've mentioned previously, this is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my arm and on my wrist, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, these are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's look at the performance during weightlifting. Now that overview is displayed here for all watches again. Now I know this is likely too small to read, but I did want to start with a general overview of these results. As you can see, there do appear to be some cheap devices that perform relatively well. As compared to before, there are more green and blue markings near the top right. And we can see that even better when we zoom in. Now here I just played just the watches with a correlation score of 0.7 or higher. 
Some Huawei bands are actually doing quite well here. The Huawei Band 4, 6 and 7 are all doing quite okay and these are really affordable watches. The Google Pixel watch is also not doing too terribly compared to some other watches, though this one is quite expensive. And the same goes for the Whoopstrap 4.0 and the Garmin Venue 2. These are all not doing terribly, but they are quite expensive compared to some of the alternatives. Again, the best performing watches, unsurprisingly, are different Apple watches and some Huawei watches. However, again, these are also generally not that cheap, so let's first try to focus on the cheapest watches instead. And those are displayed right here. These are all the watches under $50. And as you can see, out of all of these, the Huawei Band 6 and Band 4 are performing best. Now, this is still not a great performance, but honestly, for $50 or less, this is not too bad. If we now move to slightly more expensive devices between $50 and $100, we see that again the Polar OH1 Plus and Verity Sense are doing quite okay, similar to the Huawei Band 7. All the remaining watches in this category are not doing that well honestly, so I'd really put the cutoff here at okay performing watches at the Polar Verity Sense, Huawei Band 7 and Polar OH1 Plus, though again these are not doing that great either. Now in the price range of watches between $100 and $200, we see the first two watches that I would actually recommend for weightlifting, the Apple Watch SE and the Huawei Watch Fit 2. I would generally only recommend watches that have a correlation of about 0.95 or higher for weightlifting, and only these two watches are near that cutoff for this price point. Finally, when we take a look at the most expensive watches, we see several watches that are doing pretty well. However, these are again all the Apple Watches and Huawei Watches. So out of all of the watches I've tested, these honestly appear to be the only two brands that figured out how to reliably track my heart rate while weightlifting. So if weightlifting is important to you, then I would recommend you either use one of these Huawei watches or Apple watches, or just use an EGD chest strap. However, if you don't want to spend that much money and you don't really care about weightlifting, there are some cheaper smartwatches that still did pretty well for the other types of exercises. Some Huawei bands for instance did pretty well. However, let's now move on to another feature that many of these smartwatches have in common, the sleep stage tracking. Many smartwatches will track your sleep throughout the night and let you know when they think you were in REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep and awake. To check if these smartwatches can actually detect my sleep stages, I'll compare them to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Now here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well these watches perform, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on some of the top performing watches in the future. Now this graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages, and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now that means again, the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And these are the results for all watches, but this is honestly quite a lot of information at once. So let's now go through each of the price categories one by one. Let's start off with the smartwatches and sleep trackers under $50, and those are displayed right here. Now as you can see, in this price category, I only tested four devices that actually tracked all four of my sleep stages, since some of the cheaper devices just measured if I was awake or asleep for instance, without more detail. Now interestingly, amongst these four devices are two quite good trackers. Now the first is the Fitbit Inspire 2, which is a previous generation of Fitbit, but still a very good smartwatch on the budget. So this is definitely one I would recommend if you want to get a good deal on sleep stage tracking. Now Fitbits are generally pretty solid sleep stage trackers, so no matter which one you choose, you get a good result. We also see that the Google Nest Hub Generation 2 does quite well. This is actually a quite cool device and not a fitness tracker, but something you put on the side of your bed and it can remotely track your sleep stages. When I originally tested it, it didn't used to be that good, but I suspect that after Google acquired Fitbit, they might have ported the same sleep stage tracking algorithm to the Nest Hub, since the device performs very similar to Fitbit's. I actually still need to make a video about the updated algorithm, but my first test show it does quite well. However, there are actually other good and even better sleep trackers out there if you have a bit more money to spend. Surprisingly though, in the category of fitness trackers between $50 and $100, there's no noticeable improvement in performance. We can again see that a Fitbit does quite well, in this case the Fitbit Charge 5. The Withing Sleep Analyzer, which is a mat that you put under your mattress, also does pretty well. And while we saw that Huawei watches were pretty good heart rate trackers, they're not very good when it comes to sleep stage tracking, as you can see on the bottom left right here. 
If we now move to a slightly more expensive price range, so between $100 and $200, we can again see that Fitbits are the best performing sleep trackers, which is a consistent pattern for the Fitbit algorithm. However, surprisingly, we also see two Garmin watches that perform very differently. The VivoMoo Sport does really well, whereas the Vivo Smart 5 doesn't do so well. This might actually have something to do with different versions of the sleep stage tracking algorithm being used by different watches. Again, Huawei doesn't do so well, and also Samsung is not performing great when it comes to sleep stage tracking. Finally, in the most expensive category, we do see some amazing sleep stage trackers. Especially Apple Watches are doing really well, and all Apple Watches are performing more or less the same. Also, Whoop straps are doing quite well when it comes to sleep stage tracking, with a similar performance to Fitbits. And the Google Pixel Watch is also doing quite well, since it likely uses the Fitbit algorithm, as Google owns Fitbit now. The Aura Ring 3 is not doing that great yet, however Aura is just rolling out a new sleep stage algorithm that I haven't been able to test yet, so stay tuned for those results, as that might improve things drastically. So overall we can conclude that on me, Apple Watches are the best sleep stage trackers at least for iOS. But outside the Apple ecosystem, Fitbits, Whoop Straps, the Google Pixel Watch, the Google Nest Hub 2 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer are all pretty reliable sleep stage trackers. So if you're on a budget, you can for instance buy a cheap Fitbit and you'll have pretty reliable sleep stage tracking. Next, I actually want to combine the results I showed you for heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking to get an overview of the best overall watches. That is displayed right here, with better heart rate trackers further to the right and better sleep stage trackers more to the top. Specifically on the horizontal axis we have the heart rate agreement, which I calculated as the average correlation for spinning, cycling and weightlifting. And on the vertical axis we have a summary of the plot we just saw for sleep stage tracking, where I took an average of both of the axes from the previous plot. Now we can see that Apple watches just do best overall when we look at both heart rate and sleep stage tracking. Now this is of course in agreement with what I showed you before. Additionally, we see that the Huawei watches are really good heart rate trackers, they are not very good at tracking your sleep. Interestingly, we see that the Fibbit Charge 5 and the Hoopstrap 4.0 both appear to be pretty decent at both heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking, though Apple watches are still significantly better honestly. And though I generally wasn't super positive about the new Google Pixel Watch, at least according to these metrics is not that bad. Again, as you can see, as these are to the bottom left, Amazfit devices and also the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra are not devices I would recommend based on my testing. Now, as you just saw, the heart rate tracking accuracy and sleep stage tracking performance are two of the things that I can quantify quite well. However, there are also additional features that I have previously tested in my videos, but I haven't discussed so far, because these are still more difficult to summarize in numbers. And one of these features is the GPS or location tracking accuracy. But I can say that in my experience, Garmin devices are actually some of the best GPS trackers out there, so take that into account when you're buying your new device. Apple also has pretty good GPS tracking in my testing, especially in some of their latest devices. Unfortunately, Fitbit does not have a very good track record when it comes to GPS tracking, at least not when I tested them. Now, step counting is another feature I've tested quite a bit, and my experience is that generally most watches can count your steps correctly when you're actually walking. However, some of them do tend to count a lot of steps when you're not actually walking, so they give you a lot of extra steps that you didn't actually take. Now Fitbit was notoriously bad at this, but this seems to have improved quite a lot recently. Now let me give you my overall recommendations. However, before telling you which watches I would personally buy, I do want to mention a few important limitations of the testing that I showed in this video. First of all, I just tested the watches on me, a Caucasian male with a low fat percentage that is still relatively young, or at least I feel young, so be aware that though I do believe that these tests are a good first indication of how the watches will perform, they might perform slightly differently on you. Second, for the sleep stage testing, I used a reference EEG device with fewer electrodes than you would typically use with polysonography. So again, I do think that this gives a good first impression of how the smartwatches will perform. I will want to test them also with polysomnography in the future. Third, in this video I did focus on the sports and health tracking features and less on the actual smartwatch features, so I'd recommend doing your own research on that part. Fourth, I know someone on Reddit mentioned that they think I have a girlfriend who works at Apple and they claim that this is why I'm so positive about Apple. Unfortunately, I'm still single. No, but honestly, I think that Apple just did a good job, at least based on my testing. Now with all of that out of the way, which watch or health tracker would I personally buy? 
Well, first I would consider if I actually need to upgrade, since the smartwatch you own might actually be good enough already. But say that you did decide to buy a new smartwatch, then given that money would not be a problem and I could just have one device for health and sports tracking, I would probably buy a whoop strap. This is an all-round solid fitness tracker and it also has one additional important feature I didn't discuss yet. Namely the fact that this is a good health tracker as well. The whoop strap provides me with daily feedback on my health and also gives suggestions on workout intensity for instance and can also detect when you potentially have a fever using the built-in skin temperature sensor. And I personally think that these kinds of health scores and metrics are valuable in a fitness tracker as well. However, the main downside is that it's quite expensive since you need to pay a monthly membership fee which ranges from $18 to $30 depending on how long you commit. Now I actually included an affiliate link to Whoop in the description below which gives you a small initial discount and there's also a general Amazon affiliate link in case you want to buy another device. Now if you use any of these links to buy a Whoop strap or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, I get a commission which helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you any extra and for Whoop even provides a discount. However, as I said, I would only buy the Whoop strap given that money isn't an issue and my aim is to have a general solid health and fitness tracker. On the other hand, if I was mostly interested in just the sleep stage and heart rate tracking, I would probably buy an Apple Watch. My favorite Apple Watch is still the Apple Watch Ultra, given its longer battery life and the bigger screen. However, the Apple Watch SE is good enough for the majority of people and this is much, much cheaper. If I was on a really tight budget, I would probably get the Huawei Band 6 or 7 or maybe the Huawei Watch Fit 2 if I wanted really good heart rate tracking. Now, if my focus was on sleep stage tracking on a budget, I would probably get the Fitbit Inspire 3. Now, my review of the Inspire 3 is still in the making and that video should release soon, but I find it is a pretty solid sleep stage tracker, similar to all the other Fitbits. Now, the Aura Ring 3 is a pretty solid health tracker as well, and if the new sleep stage algorithm turns out to be significantly improved, then it would be an amazing health tracker as well, though it's not that suitable for heart rate tracking. By the way, if you're interested in Apple Watches, you might want to watch these reviews right here. Or if you're an Android user, I would really recommend you watch this video on the Google Pixel Watch before you buy it.